Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about controlling your Apple router uh, from the server application. We'll also talk a little bit about port forwarding and what that means and what that looks like. Now, if we're, when we start in the server application, you'll notice on the hardware section, if you have an Apple router, it'll show up on the side. Now, if you don't have an Apple router, it's not going to show up there. And so you're going to have to do these things uh, manually. You'll probably have to go through the interface of your router, uh, probably through a web, web interface or something like that. You'll have to check the documentation for your router. But again, the benefit of having an Airport Extreme with a uh, Mountain Lion server is the fact that I can control the Apple router. So if I just click this button here, it asks me for my password. Now, in the initial setup, I didn't put a password in because I just wanted to show you what it looks like on this screen uh, when you have to put in the password. And so I'm going to type in my password here. And now what it's going to do is it's going to connect to my Apple router. And now my server is now managing the router. And you can see I've got uh, settings here. I've got public services. I've got everything ready to go. Now, the benefit of this is the fact that it allows me to open up ports to the outside world to be able to access certain services. Let me just pull up the airport utility for a second to explain what I'm talking about. If you look at the airport utility, it's a graphical representation of what's going on when we're talking about what port forwarding is. You'll notice we have the internet out here. We've got our router here. Now, everything else in my home network is connected behind this router. So I've got all my various computers that are connected uh, behind here. The router is serving out the addresses inside my local network so that it knows what devices are on my network. Everything behind here is secure. And this works almost like a physical firewall. So it's, it's a device that's designed to handle all of the network addressing inside this network behind it and to keep everything from the internet out except for websites and those kinds of things that it lets in. Now, when, but there are times when I want some of my uh, services from my server to have access through the internet. When I'm outside the internet, I might want to access uh, file sharing, for instance, or I might want to access some of, I might want to be able to uh, screen share or VPN back in to my network so that I can, I can uh, act as if I'm on the network to use the things that I have there. So there are times I want to do that. Well, what port forwarding does is it punches a hole uh, kind of a uh, virtual hole, so to speak, software-wise, through the router that says, hey, allow traffic from the internet on this particular port for this particular service. Right? So for instance, uh, for file sharing, allow um, you know, file sharing to happen. So to do that, open this particular port so that it can happen. And so that's what we're doing when we're doing port forwarding. That's how we're setting those things up. So let me go back to the server app here for a minute. And that's what this public services area is all about. And so I can open up different services to the internet. So if I click the plus button here, you'll notice that I can add services that I want to have open. Right? I can access calendars on the internet, contacts, file sharing, messages, profile manager, all those kinds of things uh, that you see on the side here. I open the ports so that those things are available. Uh, so screen sharing, those kinds of things, server administration, okay, different things like that that allow me to get in. I also have the ability to have other here where I can set up my own ports. So for instance, I, let's say I want screen sharing to happen, so I'm just going to add screen sharing. And so I click Add. Now what will happen is it adds the service right here. And it's writing the information to my Airport Extreme. All right, so now I've got screen sharing going there. Uh, I can also add another service if I wanted to. I could come here and say Other, and I can type in the service name, make up whatever I want, and whatever port needs to be forwarded. So the nice thing is, is I can add these services right here in the server app without having to go into the airport utility and not having to go through all of those different things. Now, one little thing I wanted, I wanted to note here, you know it says remote login by SSH right here. Uh, I just want to give you a warning for those of you that are home users. SSH is, uh, is a great way to be able to access uh, your server remotely for certain things like uh, FTP type things and stuff like that. You know, SFTP. Uh, you can also use the terminal remotely and things like that. The the problem is, is you also open up a port that uh, hackers and people who want to get into your computer, different bots that try to guess uh, your um, your password and things like that, start to hit your server. If you've ever turned that on and you look at your logs, you can see all of a sudden you're getting hits from all over the world of these uh, bots that are trying to break into your server, trying to log into it. So if you don't need that service, I recommend that you don't enable it. You just keep it off. It's not something that you'll necessarily need as a home user uh, unless you really know what you're doing. So I just wanted to warn you about that. So let me click cancel here. 
Now you'll notice another setting here that says require user password and login over Wi-Fi and this is enabling a service called Radius. Now what Radius is, is it, it makes a more secure uh, environment for you in terms of your network because what it does instead of everybody using the same password to sign on to your network they actually use their account information that you set up in the users and groups here uh, on Mountain Lion servers so whatever they use to log into uh, their computer on your network is what they would also use then to connect to your router to have internet services so that way it's not just password protected it's username and password protected so that's a that's a service you can use if you have limited people who access your network again for home users it probably isn't that big of a deal because you know you don't have that many people coming in and out of your network but I just wanted to let you know that that service was there so now let's take a look at what this does uh, on our router by taking a look at the airport utility for a second and I'm gonna go back into uh, my router here and we're gonna go over to network again and here's what I want you to notice. Notice on our port settings I had opened up uh, a port for screen sharing and now it's showing right here so if you notice, let me just kind of move this over here for a second. I've got screen sharing I opened up here and now it's showing in my actual router. So it actually communicates with the airport utility to make sure those things are open. So it works kind of neat. Now if you want to see what that does behind the scenes, if I just click on this and click edit for a second, you'll notice there's the description of what the service is. It's screen sharing. It's got other things that are built in, but there's screen sharing right there. It's opened up the different ports that it needs to access the internet so that you can see those things on your different addresses and everything's all set. And so that's how it makes, makes it work on your airport utility uh, with that. Now, if you're using your own router, you're not using an airport utility, then what you're going to need to do is actually open these ports, like I said, yourself through your own router's interface. And so maybe I'll do a screencast on that in the future if I can get access to an external router to help show you how that works, but uh, that's how you do it. If you wanted to open other ports, by the way, through your airport utility, you could just click the plus sign here and you can create your own description and open up all the ports you want uh, through here as well. Just wanted to let you know that that service was available. Let me just uh, cancel this for a minute because we know that everything is up to date and go back into the server application. So right there, that gives you an idea of what port forwarding is, how you can open up various services, and I want to remind you of that because as we go configuring these services over here, I'm going to remind you that we need to come in here and make sure that we have access to those services from the internet so that they work properly. Okay, so that's how we want to be able to set those up. So that's all I have for you this week on uh, port forwarding. I'll come back at you next week. Uh, with, a, with another screencast on Mountain Lion uh, Server. I know I've done some of these with Lion Server, so for some of you these will be a little bit of a repeat, but a few things have changed just a little bit, and I feel like people won't find these things if they're looking for Mountain Lion Server. They won't find them if they got to find them under Lion Server. So as always, if these are helpful, helpful to you, please uh, like them. Uh, share them with your friends. Uh, that helps other people find them more easily on the Internet, and that way you'll be helping other people get their servers set up as well. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.